Okay, recording is in progress. Go ahead, Lloyd. Yeah, so um, I'm seeing the time again is uh, close to one o'clock. I'm not sure if I'll, I'll uh, want to be going on further with my own presentation as I usually did. Um, probably we can end today. I do have another meeting set up for 1.30. Um, so probably we can finish today. But uh, if there's anybody, of course, uh, we can open up the floor uh, for questions. And I see Juliet has her uh, hand up. And so now we can have a discussion probably for the next half an hour or so. Yes, no, thank you. Uh, let me turn to my video. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, and congratulations, um, CC, for, for your work yeah. to the speaker. Um, congratulations for all your, your work and your, your leadership role. Um, it's quite impressive. And I actually think it's, um, it's a type of work and levels that we need to get to um in in some of our countries so the work that you do and the intensity with which you do it um you know i believe should be uh, uh, repeated and be modeled in countries like ourselves uh, well done um i i also work with my name is juliet from south africa i work on a program with children and youth what we had a, a particular project called you go girl the problem the program was all about encouraging girls to get into more ICT technical mechanical type of um, um, uh, subjects and also subject choices because we found that a lot of the girls would go ch would choose the easier no not the easier the more the soft subjects so I'd like to know is what have you done um, to encourage girls to take up more what is normally known as your typical um, men stream in terms of subjects, because it starts at school. Because normally we picked up the problem is normally at uh, the university where we have, we have certain shortages in skills, but we don't have enough girls to fill in or even women to fill in those roles. What have you done and how have you done it to encourage girls to get into more technical and ICT uh, type of programs or subjects in school? And also, how do you, how do you uh, assist them? Because we also have a lot of child-headed households. And what we find that in our communities, the child-headed household, normally the girl is the one who would end up playing the role of a mother uh, in the absence of a mother. And then the boys would be encouraged to study and do other activities. And what interventions you had with maybe community or any, uh, encourage girls to to want to stay in school or to go back to school, particularly the orphaned children. Um, yes, and I, I, it's an excellent work that you do. Those are the two questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, can I just take all the questions together so that I can? Oh, you want me to uh, answer this one? Well, uh, no. Uh, we'll follow your lead. Please type your questions into the chat. Erwin, I see you have questions. So please ask your question and then we'll proceed to the next person who has their hand raised. Thank you. Okay, yeah, Madam Islamia, thank you very much for the presentation. I hope you can hear me okay, everybody. My question is uh, dealing with the rural area, the student in the remote area far away from the city, uh, sometimes the condition of the school, for example, in many of the developing country, they don't have a, a good facility, some desks, they need some desks, they need some facility equipment and so on. How do you approach that kind of uh, issue, the problem, maybe some student even sitting on the floor, uh, don't have enough desks, uh, um, can we even make uh, uh, leap on the technology can we even give them uh, some laptop if somebody would like to donate laptop can we give them and you also mentioned about the uh, the some of the children is on the street sometimes they're making more money in the street so that they rather not to go to school uh, i wasn't uh, sure uh, is that correct the way i understand why how how do they 
uh, make money on the street uh, so that they don't want to go to school, maybe helping the parent or thank you. Next question or hand raise, please. Then perhaps you can answer the question beginning with uh, Juliet and then you could go on to Erwin. Thank you so much. Go right ahead, you can answer those questions, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. The issue of girl child, issue, the issue of girl child, in our own office, because I'm talking in capacity of ASAP, we have a program that we designed for girls, free reading exercise. After school, we ask them to come to the office. We create a place for them. They stay there. We got a staff that worked directly with them. They bring out some, some of them, we bring along their assignments from school. And the designated person will look into it and assist them. And this is really working. But when you look at it, all these programs doesn't come alone. You have to pay the salaries of the staff that is working there and a good number of activities that you give the children because you don't want them to be on the street, to be outside. They want to learn. That's why they came to enroll themselves in our center. And it's free for them. We don't collect any money from them for it. Secondly, the child added house, um, household in South Africa. Is it not in South Africa? Yes, it is. From, yes, it is. Sorry? I think you said the South. Yes, it is South Africa. Is it not in South Africa? Is in South Africa, she said. Yes, in South Africa, yes. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. This, um, we have a good number of girls that don't work. It is evenings they go and work. And that is why we need a proper home for these children, for these girls. Like habitation of hope that I said, they have a section for boys and they have a section for girls. But for you to have a massive place like that, you have to invest a lot of money. So what I see on this child added household, they are the type of girls that we go and go out and make money for their family. Am I not with you? Uh, it is true, and uh, it is sad because they end up leaving school and not going they back to school. Uh -huh. They leave school, they go out and work. And the work they are going to is in different areas. Any work they do, they bring money home to support their family. And the family don't want to know wherever they get the money from. So long they are able to sustain the family. It happens, just such happens in Nigeria as well. It's not only in South Africa, it's all over. It's all over developing countries. There are students in rural areas. I, we did a, a lot of work on this rural, rural, when we wanted to do the global land washing business. The Ministry for Rural Development asked us to visit um, some rural area. We went to Riverine area and we went to some rural area in the island. And we could see for ourselves that a lot, we need a lot of work. Some of these children, we came in at the time school was closing. And they told us the children 
have they, 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 they leave their place, they are going to another village. And where they even told us that they were going for the education was really far. It was far. And when you look at it, a good number of programs we took to their area we are very effective. Went to along Ogun State. Oh, um, then we also we also went to um, the Riverine area because when they wanted to do the Global Land Washing Day, Ministry for Rural Development asked us to visit and let them know some of the areas how they are. Um, how they how they are using the, the nature of toilets they were using. They were using open desification. So we gave them a comprehensive report that these are the things that they should put in place, even for the schools that are there in the rural area. In the area of materials, we work with a lot of schools. We give them materials. I was speaking to a cousin of mine in US just yesterday. I said, my intention was to have a summer camp. And this summer holiday program that we are going to, I said, it's not really going to be a camp because I don't want to saddle, we don't want to saddle ourselves in having children on the same spot. We are going to give them holiday coaching. And I need tablets to provide for them. If you can just give me 200, 500 tablets, I will be, in fact, I will be the upper expression because I know the number of schools that will come for the program. And we are trying to promote online uh, um, online learning and we want to give them a lot of lessons on coding and different areas we have to give them tablets that they'll be able to use so that's a very good idea that he will try as much as I, did. I said we don't even mind to partner with them and promote their own name the moment we partner with them and promote their own name they will know the type of their products. All they need is to just brand whatever they are giving us on their company's name and asset. And it will go to, at least I can promise them that nothing less than 15 out of the 36 states will get it, will get their products at the initial stage. That was what I told them. So we are, I will be happy, I will be happy to collaborate with organization that is ready to do that for us because we need to give these people. When you ask them to do this online, they will rely on their parents' um, phone to work. Some of them will tell you if they come at the weekend because we used to have weekend coaching at times during the holiday. Some of them will tell, tell you that their father didn't give the phone for them to use. It's not their fault because of the situation of the country. So we are ready to collaborate. Our door is open. And I must let you know that just as we have academic advisory board, we have global advisory board as well. So that advise us on different areas. Thank you. Wow. If you see the publication of our magazine, of the last edition of our magazine, you will see the two white um, ladies there. One of them is Judith McConnell at the Kansas University. She's a member of our academic advisory board as well. So thank you so much. Juliet, you have your hand raised. Okay, thank you. Thank you again. And thanks for the opportunity to ask. Um, I just, I, I want to know in terms of your street kids uh, we have problems of street kids in in obviously in south africa and most mm -hmm. of it is linked to the usage of drugs 
that a lot of the kids, as soon as they go into the street, they start using drugs. So when you bring when you bring them into uh, back into the school, um, mm. how are you able to integrate them back into the schooling system? Obviously, there's a money situation, but how are you able to get them to want to be school children again um, and also follow the values um, of a school? Because I'm assuming any school or education environment would have stricter rules. Um, how do you integrate them back? Into, uh, into the schooling system. And then the, um, and also how, how, how is the response and how do they actually mix with the kids that would, would have been in the schools or in, in normal household? Uh, because when you mentioned it, I realized we have a huge number of, I mean, we do have, but our government um, I think has given up. I mean, we have a rule that says every child under the age of 15 has to be in school. But when they're on the streets, they live under the bridge, they're taking drugs, no one bothers to go and fetch them. So it'd be interesting to know how you integrate them back into the school, uh, schooling system. And then the other question was, um, we, okay, this also has to do with uh, girl children. As you know, that's normally my bias because mm -hmm. I work with women as well. We, we know about the mm -hmm. situation with the Boko Haram, um, especially with more mm -hmm. the, communi the Muslim communities. And, um, and that might not be in everywhere in Nigeria. Uh, how do you manage situations? Does your government help you to protect the girls who need to be in school? Um, you know, or is that properly uh, managed? Yeah, that's about it. Oh, by the way, we've also, um, we are busy looking for about 500 laptops. So it's good to know that we're not the only ones who are on that mission. Anyway, um, well done. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you know what, you know what? As you have said, the um, on these street children. When I was told that a state, some of the children they brought out from the streets to the school, the following time they went back. They did not. They did. Some of them do not return back to school. So they were looking for over 50,000 children that, are, that, are, that have not reported back to school. I said, when you bring out children from the streets, it's not proper for you to just take that, the set of children to classroom, just like that. If you take them to classroom and they think that if I'm still on the streets, this is what I will make. They will, they will leave classroom for the streets. But when you bring them to your office, you give them more than enough lecture on different areas. You start to let them know, giving them different, different role models. Don't you want to be like the president? Don't you want to be like Dangote? Don't you want to be like Professor Payobaya? Don't you want to be like this and that. Sometimes they will ask you, who is this? You will tell them that this person is this person. If you will explain fully to them, it is not because of this five naira, 100 naira that you are being paid outside because you are carrying load. Because they are not just sitting outside. They are doing work. They are, they are working outside. So, it is not because of it. When you try to lecture them and you let them know the importance of education, what they can be in another 10, five years time, how they are going to progressively develop themselves, you will be sure that they will not go back. If they come to our office today, when they are leaving, we give them Coke and biscuits. They will rush and come tomorrow for more lectures. After that, we are preparing to work with Subeb, to hand them over to Subeb. You understand me? That is the way yeah. you can bring yeah. these children out of street to schools because their eyes are already open. They have seen that our city, if you make 5,000 today, you will finish it tomorrow with all this rubbish you are taking. 
But when you sit down in the classroom and become a man, you two will stand in front of the classroom and teach. You two will stand in the university and lecture. By the time you give them all those examples, they will definitely want to come along with you. Okay. This, are the, this is the method that we adopted in our own organization and it's really working for us. Just the, the one on the girls and Boko Haram situation. Thank you. Sorry? The question the about girl? girls and the Boko Haram situation okay. in Nigeria. Okay. When, when Boko Haram started in Nigeria, in fact, we were among the organizations too. We also joined other NGOs to fight against Boko Haram. In fact, if I see one of the one of the flyers we prepared that period on Boko Haram. I will post it on our platform. I post it on our platform so that on the network so that you will see. Boko Haram, it okay. is government that can address the issue because it is getting out of hands. And it is only government that can stand firm we, did, we have done so many advocacy on it, but still, it's still there. If you open your television this evening, the same, the same problem. If they are not kidnapped, Boko Haram has attacked this village, Boko Haram has attacked that village, and they turn young girls into mothers. You can imagine. Mm. It is government. Yeah. It's the issue of government. Yeah. And the government, I don't know whether they are not ready to invite international organizations to assist in coming out the issue of Boko Haram. I don't want to double into that. You understand me? Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Erwin, you, Erwin, you have your hand. Erwin, you have a hand raised for a question. I can't hear you. Uh, my, my last comment, I uh, would like to ask you, uh, uh, have you thinking about telemedicine where while we do, while we waiting for the laptop or a tablet, can we Sorry? have a, uh, while waiting, we were waiting for the tablet coming. Can we do the tele-education by having a teacher in Lagos, for example, and the rural area where there is no teacher, uh, where a student can see video to video with the teacher in Lagos and the student in the remote area so they can yes. learn. Um, yes. In fact, the teacher can be from US, right? Because the, the key is uh, what about the access to internet, access to, to online education like that? Is it possible to do that now? It, it, it is possible. You know what we normally do? There is, if we are going to, if we are going on training in any part, whether rural or no rural, we ensure that we carry our own, all our electrical appliances, including generator. If you don't have laptop, if you don't have um, light, we will provide our own generator and we use there. The only thing is that in most of the rural areas now, it has been developed. Some of them use telephone. If they, if they don't have network, they will not use telephone. You understand me? There are schools in the rural areas. So many schools in the rural area. We are ready to collaborate, definitely. We are ready to work with you. So Thank Irwin, you. I guess the question to you, Erwin, is that do you have, or are you suggesting a particular program from the Russell organization to work with this group? Is that your question or is that yeah, your interest? Yeah, Andrew, what I was thinking is that, can we uh, collect, for example, you know, tablet, the used tablet? Uh, I know a lot of the library in the city and all the, a lot of these uh, US, they have like after three, four years, they throw away their computer. Maybe the computer is too heavy to send it out to them. A laptop is relatively also being discarded easily because they are relatively cheap. Uh, well, maybe I can ask you, how easy is to send all these things 
to Africa? Do we need to have some uh, permit from the government? Uh, can do we have to have like I know we have to empty the the tablet with uh, or the computer out of any any upper remaining file or anything so that maybe we can do that somehow. But uh, the problem may be how expensive it's to send it uh, to Africa, for example, mm. to Nigeria, to South Africa, so that we can give some of this laptop to the student, at least uh, may even maybe use one. That might be well, one of the, yes. the problem. In answer to your question, in addition to my role here as the president of Five Points Youth Foundation, I'm also the chairperson of the International Advisory Board for an organization that's based in Lagos, Nigeria. It's called the Shola Agbula Goodwill Ambassador Foundation, Saga Foundation. The president or the CEO and founder, Shola Agbula, since 2013, has transferred over $50 million worth of educational and medical equipment to all through, throughout uh, Nigeria and Kenya. So the short answer is that there are already existing resources being deployed to Nigeria. So I would suggest that I connect this organization with the so Saga Foundation founder and see if we can move that forward. But Erwin, I'm speaking specifically to your organization. What are you offering? Are you, are you suggesting? Are you willing to execute a memorandum of understanding for your participation with this effort or any effort you're suggesting? Uh, no, I, I, I'm not thinking about providing funding to buy a, a tablet or anything and then send it to, to Nigeria or any other country. But I'm hoping maybe I can put a platform in my website, for example, so that we can inform many people, maybe you can help in terms of spreading the word that we need use tablet for children in the school in Africa so that we can maybe become a center point for collection. Well, that, yeah. Excuse me. In the first place, I'm happy to provide this platform for presentations of the kind that are suggested. And we're also happy for input from audiences such as yourself but I would ask in your own role as CEO of the Russell Foundation to be able to only offer ideas that you are willing to follow through on. Of course, the discussion about laptops for children in Africa is a much bigger topic than we have the space or time to deal with here. But thank you so much for your question. Thank you. Are there any further questions or comments? Yes, I was gonna. I was going to say actually that uh, there doesn't seem to be to any more questions. So perhaps we can wrap up. It's already twenty after one here. And of course, as you say that, we have a hand raised. So I'll just just to let you know, Lloyd, if if this goes over, I'll be able to close it out if you'd have to leave. But I do see that there is a hand raised, so we'll open the floor up again. Thank you. Go right ahead. Ask your question. Uh, yes, I I think one of the the things that we need to do with is that in every session we identify uh, a, a very crucial uh, uh, aspects that needs further grappling with. And, and, and you know, this forum don't have the time uh, and, 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 and the purpose to deal with that. Maybe we, we should uh, create a thing scrum or something uh, where we can deal with these specific problems and see how we can come up with collective answers. You know, uh, to start, if each of us individually start a campaign for uh, uh, some of the problems, it's, it's very difficult, but collectively we can create uh, the, the understanding, the need and the desire for people to help us. Uh, I don't have all the answers, but you know, uh, I think most of the times we brush off these problems and, and they don't get solved. We need to come up with a mechanism to do that. And uh, yeah, maybe we need some brain scrumming or whatever to, to come up with the right sort of platform to, to cater for that. And also, you know, ensure from the outset that we've got the accountability and transparency and whatever 
on such a platform to really deal on behalf of 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 the rest of the people. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Carlos. I see your hand was raised, but in answer to your question, Heinrich, this is exactly the outcome I was hoping for us to reach, but it could only happen when we have a critical mass, understanding that that's the objective. So I'd be happy to set up a time specifically for an action team to work on so that we could meet on uh, perhaps one day, an hour per week to follow up separately from these general discussions that's strictly dealing with strategy. So yes, and Carlos, your, your hand was raised and then Juliet, thank you. Well, Juliet, Carlos let, lowered his hand. So if you have a comment, now's that time. Oh, is he not there? All right. Sorry. Um, he lowered his hand. All right. Okay. Thank you. No, I um, I I want. I also agree with what the approach that you took, and I was actually wondering whether the meeting that we normally have with people like Erwin um, could actually extend to discuss some of these details if the issues are tabled with them. You know, some of the issues that need um, attention, especially those that cut across a few a few countries. Um, yes, and then my, my, my last question, it was actually a point, and also to congratulate Nigeria, because on the continent of Africa, Nigeria is actually leading in the space of ICT, information, information communication technology. Um, and I see that the approach like you have, uh, Madam, uh, with your school, and the support that you get is actually what results in more um, young people or the country getting more into the space of ICT, uh, which I think is actually uh, admirable. My question now is post high school or post schooling years, do you have a system to assist uh, young people who leave the school? Because in our country like South Africa, we have young people who leave the school, they go up to, because um, school is mandatory, up to metric, uh, which is 12, then after that, they, they, they don't continue. To have a system to help learners to want to continue to go into universities and tertiaries, uh, or do you only end up with um, primary and high school? Yeah, thank you. Mm. As, as the name suggests, Association for Childhood Education Practitioners, our program is for children and youth. You understand me? Not for the, not for um, univers not at the university level, because the program on childhood enough is in, is enough program that by the time you start putting the program together, you find it very difficult not to, to now put the issue of university education it will be too much. You work within your own school. Our own is early childhood, primary, and youth. You understand me? So we don't, yes. we don't, we don't, we don't go too far into, okay. we don't dive into university level. Okay. Um, no, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. sorry. Um, I think my question was supposed to be, do you help them maybe with things such as application, at least for them to get into that uh, environment, even if you don't go with them in that environment? Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. We, our, we assist them in different ways, in so many ways. And at the end of the day, by the time they finish their uh, secondary school, they are getting into um, working into getting into university. We do mentor them. We do mentor them. There are some that have even that even passed through my school in those days that I gave scholarship to. They still come to me after their after their youth service. Some of them will even say that they just want to come and serve in our office. They will come to our office. 
answer. Awesome. So these are some of the benefits they used to get from us. Especially those that did the education. So in addressing your the second part of your question, I would suggest that uh, the event that Irwin is hosting on a weekly basis is one that he's hosting for a specific purpose. I'm suggesting a separate meeting specifically for action plan that I'm willing to accommodate on whatever day available. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I, I completely agree, uh, Andrew. I think, uh, and also Henrik, I think we, we need some kind of uh, brainstorming in this uh, issue, trying to find the solution for uh, maybe some of the system, the system and problem are similar. So like Henrik say, let's get together and then just focus on certain aspect for one week, for example, for example, education and then empowerment of women or something second week or, and so on. So the, we have some kind of collection of uh, potential solution and we just gather, gather them together, list them and see which one is the best solution. So in that regard, Henrik and, and Erwin, whatever day you two agree upon, I'll set my time available. Yes, I'm and I'm I'm to... can I just chip in a little into what he has just said on the empowerment of women. It's not only, nowadays, it's not only women you empower, you empower girls, because when you empower them, they will be useful to the society. I will, I will try as much as possible because I'm invited to share an occasion a school will be having a graduation um, empowerment program for our students, the male and the girls. They are passing out of the school. And at the same time, she did some, he did some, the school did some vocational training for them. And they were able to catch up with the vocational training. And he said out of their own pocket, this is what they are going to give the children. So they are empowering them. Because sometimes the children stay at home for a couple of months before they, 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 they get into universities. And during that period, another thing can happen. They said, evil, um, I don't mind devil's workshop. During the period they are staying at home, another friend of them can come and call them, come, let's go to this, let's go to that. So he's empowering them, which I quite support now. Okay. All um, women, we should try as much as possible. Those that have the school, that's what I'm going to tell them during the program. They should be doing empowerment program for their young graduates in as much as they are doing vocational training in the school. Because all schools are now doing vocational training according to the system of education then why can't we empower them before they leave the school? So that they'll be useful to the society. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, Juliet, I see your hand raised. I believe we're moving to close. Juliet, yes, your hand is raised. I just wanted to, to ask if I can be part of that team that's going to look at the strategy um, that you're commending. Yes, I'll, I'll make that available to uh, Erwin and to Heinrich and to yourself at this point. And then anyone else okay. that wants to join. Yeah. Uh, I think as far as uh, my time, if it is 11 o'clock, it's a good time, uh, US time. Uh, I'm available Monday, uh, Tuesday, uh, and Friday. Then, uh, then it'll have to be Friday because I think we're all booked those other days. But Friday, I'm willing to take that time. Uh, Heinrich, it's about uh, two hours before now for you in South Africa. So if you could join us at that time, would that be? available on Fridays? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll set it up then. Um, no, I, I'll, 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 set, I'll, no, I'll set this okay, up. Okay, you set up because yeah. Uh, yeah, you probably with the streaming, uh, you, you prob capability of streaming and maybe YouTube later on because I'm still learning process here myself. So I might in fact need your help in my part. No worries. I'll also set up a, a WhatsApp group right now just for us. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. I, I'll put Thank an email, you. maybe I, I'll, maybe you can set up an email also, uh, Andrew. Of course, yeah. no problem. Uh, Juliet, make sure I have your email address in the chat or otherwise. Thank you. All right, will do. Thank you. Thank okay, you. and we can start uh, education for the first one? Tomorrow is fine. Tomorrow's Friday, isn't it? 
Yeah, I don't know, Eric, are you available? I'm available tomorrow. Yes, I'm available. Yes, How about you, Juliet? Yes, I will be, I'll make myself available. What time Excellent. is that call at? What time EST or PST? It's, uh, 11, uh, uh, 8 o'clock PST, 11 o'clock. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be PST. 8 o'clock Pacific. Of course, it interests me anything to do with education and learning and the children and being able to communicate that. And action, these are, this, is strict, this is strictly about action items to identify and, pro, and progress action plans for outcomes. That's the only reason for this group. Okay. I think uh, Carlos uh, has, have a question uh, before. Uh, uh, yeah, hello. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Presenter. I present, I present your presentation. I show a lot of synergy for, for programs that have implemented, especially from the UNICEF as perspective in terms of out of schools, uh, out of school children, and also in terms of uh, supporting girls. Uh, go back to school or remain in school. And uh, I think uh, you have you, you expanded on a lot of areas that we can set up a synergy uh, as Unity Net Africa and Diaspora. We can work together, especially we are looking out for uh, potential people who are willing to work and, and work on the Unity Network uh, Nigeria chapter to ensure that we all at continental level, we come together because we have common, common areas, common problems that I know, apart from uh, maybe South Africa which is G20 uh, country, but uh, for most of uh, those countries, uh, we are really in a deplorable state. So if we can come together as Africans, to ensure that we look at uh, our common synergies and set up uh, a very, a very good and smart uh, uh, project concept, and and find possible partnership for sponsorship or support, so that we can have for Nigeria can do their South Africa or Sierra Leone or Malawi Tanzania, that will help so much because uh, that's actually the focus, that's the framework we are working towards to ensure that uh, as Unity Net Africa, we have funding. And, and then of course, this funding will go to uh, different countries to support uh, the, the problematic situations that are currently there. So that's, that's my suggestion. And in relation to your, your proposal for looking at indicators of uh, the way forward. And I think it's not just to do it with uh, Henry and um, uh, Juliet or Iron, but it's also to look at, to include other stakeholders in Africa to ensure that uh, we discuss the, uh, uh, the action points and ensure that we move forward because we have been discussing for a very long time now. And I think we have clear point of uh, the problematic situation in Africa. So that's, um, that's why I'm happy, the suggestion of uh, looking into actions now, the action point and see what we can come up and look at the possible partnership or opportunities, what we can do for us to move because every day, time is, is, eating, is eating on us. And so time is not on our favor. So we have to uh, think of it and, and take and start to take some actions. Yes, of course, the discussions are very good. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are smart. Uh, they, they, they broaden our ideas or focus. This is very, very correct. So let's start to look into actions so that the people that we are representing, I mean, they can see an openness to hope for the hopeless. 
So once again, this is great. And uh, let us continue to, to do what we can to ensure, let us remember we are representing uh, the community people and they are waiting on us. They want to see reality. They want to see implementation. Thank you. Uh, yes, Carlos, if I may, I think this action plan is only initial, initial point. So uh, everybody are welcome, including the expert. And of course, we're going to be, uh, as I say, collecting all these ideas, uh, a potential solution. And Andrew, I would suggest we can document, document this process so that we can go along and advancing as we go, we go moving forward. We, well, we yes could. and no. uh, to Carlos and to Erwin, this is a specific action team. I'm leading it. My corporation, PRXTC Export Trading Company, will lead it, and it'll be completely accountable. But this is not a discussion group. This is an action group. Lloyd, you have your hand raised. Oh, by the way, in the chat, I just created a group. We'll make uh, edits later, but I did put the group invite into the uh, chat. If you want to join, please do. Lloyd, the floor is back over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Actually, that's that's exactly the question I was going to ask to clarify, because I wanted to make sure that this, this uh, discussion group that you're going to be creating is under what portfolio? So you have- It's, you not, have... it's, not, it's not a discussion group. It's an action group. My mm -hmm. corporation is making itself available to identify and facilitate action plans only. Okay, well, this is what I wanted to clarify was, was what is this group uh, purpose and who is hosting it? So it will be RXTC. Uh, so this is not a, uni a global unity network group. This is not a, let's say an ad hoc international advisory board of goodwill ambassador group. This is an Andrew uh, PARXTC group. But Andrew, wouldn't be there have to be some kind of uh, some degree of discussion because we cannot just put all this action on the table without knowing what, what was the problem. I would suggest, Erwin, that in every case, I take the time. It's only twenty four hours, but I'll try to put out guidelines. But as I've said right now, I, all I'm doing is making available an opportunity for us for those that intend to participate which will require a non-disclosure agreement, et cetera, to do so with specific guidelines that I outlined. If people are not willing to join, they don't have to. So I'm also expecting uh, that uh, because we've gone through several uh, uh, sessions and uh, I'm hoping that uh, I won and should have gotten a lot of uh, indicators or actions that maybe he can start to uh, put together to for us to look at that deal, what what we have, so that we go to we we go direct to what we are saying. We go into action, so we look at the actions and look at the way forward. Well, that's specifically between you and Irwin. My particular group will be for PARXTC, my corporation. I'm making a commitment to actually develop action plans. We all already have access to resources. We all know that among our team, <clears throat> excuse me, we have Joan Kerr. She already has projects that will make available uh, seed funding for projects that impact education, electricity, and empowerment. We already know those things are available. There has to be work put in to connect that opportunity with specific people with specific tasks and they have to be identified as to what their in expected outcomes are and what the benefits are. This is not a small undertaking, but this is something yeah. that I believe we are able to undertake and I'm willing to do so, but under my own terms. Okay. Um, I just wanted to, sorry, to not raise my hand, to clarify that the, what the Rusley Institute is doing is not, um, these, these, are not two, these are two separate matters. And I think that's yes. what Professor Wright tried yes. to his, clarify. Yeah. Yes, his, his meeting is held on Tuesdays. This is not that meeting. This is my meeting. Yes. Thank you. OK, Thank we'll you. start tomorrow. Yes, we'll start tomorrow. Thank you. Yes, Julia, the invite link is in the chat. Also, Heinrich, I don't have your contact, but the, e the invite is in the chat.
Okay, so um, I guess that th does this wrap up today's discussion? I'm I'm glad that we've finally uh, been able to um, start uh, discussing about action plans that we can take. Obviously, we are also having our Wednesday discussion with Irwin on the projects uh, for for establishing some of this uh, Unity Garden infrastructure as well. Um, but uh, I am obviously also having conversations here. Uh, as I said, I will be, will be meeting with uh, our team here uh, to, to try to move uh, forward on, on uh, both sides, uh, both the physical as well as the virtual infrastructure. Um, so these conversations are continuing uh, and we will have, of course, uh, every Thursday meeting um, and we will continue to promote Erwan and probably also we will be promoting uh, Andrew's um, action groups as well over our networks. And, and uh, Juliet, I have a meeting tomorrow at 11, so I won't be on there, but I have an action idea for you, so I'll get with you. Thank you, everybody. Oh, have a good right. day. Yeah, can forward it to me. I'll include it. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh, that was Prophet. Oh, Prophet, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Prophet, yeah, I'll hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank Andrew. Everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank okay. you so much. And yeah. we'll see you all next week. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Thank see you, you all. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. bye. Prophet will talk. Please call me. I will.